Today's video is sponsored by Simply Safe. More on that later. <laughs> How you going? Now, I have never been this excited to make a video before, so let's just roll straight into the build. Now, if you don't know what a Beyblade is, they are these little crappy plastic spinning discs, which just like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh created a horrible TV show with the sole purpose of tricking children into buying expensive rubbish. And it worked. I loved them way more than Pokemon and the other games, mainly because playing with Beyblades involved real physical armed combat with the other kids at school. Kind of like American schools today. If there's a shooter at the door. And I have such fond memories from recess time of all the kids gathering around the Beyblade arena and excitingly making bets with their lunch money, just like a Cambodian cockfight. Beyblade! All right, there you go. And most kids were lucky enough to have parents that bought them Beyblades, but I didn't, so I just stole other kids. And this worked for quite a while until everyone realized I somehow had all the Beyblades in the school. But now I have the opportunity to make my own. And at the moment, it doesn't spin too well. But I'm hoping I can fix that by slapping on a similar top and bottom to this Beyblade, and then it'll spin real good. Now, I'm not going to randomly start adding things on and just spinning this big boy up at a high speed, as I really don't want to make the same mistake that scientists like Stephen Hawking's made and lose the use of my legs in a horrific Beyblade accident. So I'm going to make some smaller prototypes with this saw blade and my 3D printer. So I decided to actually do some research and I found out that there is a very wholesome niche community of men that enjoy nothing more in the world than relaxing and spinning tops. And after sifting through hundreds of photos of them at the beach with their designer full metal spinning tops, I came across their 11 spinning top commandments. And I'll give you a summary as they mainly just babble on about not sleeping with a fellow topper's wife and the importance of never ever reading the script from another spinning top club, but there was some useful information. Mostly that I need to keep the weight even and down low. And they kept referencing heavy hauls. And I thought they were talking about each other's wives again, but a haul is actually the spinning blade. And the heavier and wider it is means the spinning top will spin more stably and for longer. So this is what I came up with. And after giving it a spin, I realized that I had completely ignored the first commandment and had too much weight on top of the hall. And I'm going straight to hell. So I came up with this much smaller design and it spins really well. And I got pretty impatient and just decided I was gonna shove a bearing in it and then spin it up with a drill to see what it would do to a carrot. Now I just need to do the same thing and upscale it with the really big blade and then also find somewhere to buy giant carrots. So this is my plan for the big boy. I've got my giant bay blade in the middle on a ramp and it's locked in place with a metal rod. Then I get a lawnmower on top and attach a wheel to the shaft which will make contact with the top of the bay blade, spinning it really fast. Then I just pull away the holding rod and hopefully it will just travel down the tracks, spinning into a house filled with things that it will destroy. All right, now I just need to decide what I'm making the body of the Beyblade out of. And at first I felt like a genius, as I thought I could just make it out of this old wooden post and also turn my drill press into a lathe using a couple of bolts and then turn the wood down to size. But that didn't really work. So I decided to try it again. Ow, again. And got a nice punch in the stomach and bent my crappy rig which is probably a sign I should stop and do it the proper way. So I got in touch with a friend who actually knows what they're doing and has a really big lathe, and my mate Jilly. Jilly comes from a family of lathes. His father was a lathe, his father's father was a lathe, and his great grandpapa was the largest cast iron lathe in Australia. So I just bought 20 kilos of heavy metal, which hopefully would not fly off and hit me in the chest. 
and as soon as we slapped the round bar into the lathe, it became very clear that it actually wasn't round. The metal workers had gypped me. It was super wobbly, and this definitely needs to come out if I want my blade to spin well. And we did this in a process known as facing. Similar to facing in Hollywood, where a blade is scraped along the surface to remove any irregularities and insecurities. Then, once we finished that, we bore a hole to place the bearing in. And neither of us know how this is done, but we've heard the name press fit bearings before. So we used a press to fit the bearings. And the hole was probably a bit too tight as we could only get the bearing in half the way, but it should still work. And after we finished putting it in, I realized I hadn't actually been doing anything. So while he was facing up the other pieces, I'm gonna use a tool I've always wanted to use, the mill. It looks like a drill press, but cuts in multiple directions, cutting anything you want. Moving through steel like butter, and through butter like water, and through water like it's not even there. And I always thought using one of these was gonna be infinitely fun, but the novelty wore off pretty quick and I was just frustratingly turning and playing with my knob for several hours. So a pretty normal day. And after I had finished cutting the contact ridges on the now buttery steel, there was only one thing left to do, which was to create the point on the bottom of the bay blade. So I have no idea how this works. So you could just be making stuff up and I'm just gonna believe you. <laughs> Watch Secret it is I off. don't know how it works either. <laughs> and the spinning top men recommended a round point if you want the spinner to move around a lot, which I do. So Jilly just tapered the end and we're done. And it's beautiful and even balances on the point, which gives me hope about the distribution of weight being correct. An accident as well. How, does, how is it standing? How is it doing that? Are you tricking me? It's just spinning that fast and we can't even tell. It's just matching up with the frame rate of our eyes. <laughs> Now I really should have made all these parts thread together, but you need to remember that I don't know what I'm doing at all. So instead I'm just gonna have to weld them. And because the rest of the metal is shiny, I figured I also need to clean the rust off the blade to match, but only on the side you'll see. And this is a big problem with cleaning things. You just discover more problems. So after welding up the crack, I decided I was definitely not gonna clean the other side. And then I figured I would never have to take it apart again, so I just welded all the parts together using my strongest welding rods while trying to keep the whole bay blade level. And this thing is now hilariously heavy. It weighs 22 kilos, or for my American viewers, 22 kilos, but in pounds. Now I just need to find a way to spin it, and I don't want to break my lawnmower. So I'm gonna check out the abandoned house down the road, which I'm planning to let the Beyblade loose in and see if I can find anything useful there. And amazingly, the property was filled with all kinds of different lawnmowers, some electric ones, some petrol ones, and even a shy one. And I also discovered something I wasn't expecting to find in a nice middle-class suburban area like my own. What, no? Pots. Lots and lots of pots, which I reckon were used to grow pot. You know what I like? I like it that it looks like someone else has already used a massive bay blade in here and just cut off all the plants. <laughs> For you. Does it smell like it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I've got no idea. It's never noticed. Maybe it's all parsley. Maybe that's what it is. And it looks as though no one had been here for a while and they don't really need all these lawnmowers. So I snagged one and took it home. And I don't know why I thought the lawnmower from the abandoned grow house would work, but it didn't. So I'm going to have to take it apart and give it a scrub. After taking it apart, I'm very disappointed in the local dealers. Not only did they get caught and lose their stash, but they also have no respect for lawnmowers and have definitely not done the recommended engine oil change every six months. So I decided I needed to take the carburetor and air filter off and give it all a good clean. And some of you have been asking for more restoration videos as you kind of liked how relaxing and ASMR it was. So here's another, just for you guys, how to restore your local drug dealer's lawnmower. First, just take apart the carburetor and clean away the thick THC oil that is built up and dried in the bottom of the carburetor bell. And then take out this small metal piece at the bottom and clean out the holes with a pin until it is clear enough that a stoner, no matter how strong their lungs, could use it as a cone piece if they wanted to. Then chuck out the old clogged air filter and replace it with a drug-free one. And then I just repaired the crack in the fuel tank and put it all back together. And now hopefully it'll work. 
And it kinda works. It almost sounds like it's having an asthma attack, but that's pretty fitting considering where it came from. Now I'm gonna try and attach a long shaft and tire to the engine of the lawnmower. And to do so, I need to remove the lawnmower blade. And I was planning to use this heavy piece of offcut I got for cheap as the new extended shaft, but it's a little too heavy. So instead, I'm gonna use this steel pipe. And I am wanting to use this saw blade to cut it, but it says it's only rated for aluminium. So I just made a quick adjustment to the pipe and now it works. And now I need a frame to attach the lawnmower and everything else to. So I also borrowed this bench from the grow house. And in order to keep the lawnmower shaft from wobbling, I'm using some of these bearing pillow blocks. And don't make the same mistake I did. The name is very misleading and they're not a comfortable substitute at all. And now I've gotten far enough that I reckon I can give it a slow, full scale test just to see if I'm kind of on the right track. So I just cut up some of my mate's climbing rope, sorry Matt, and tied it around and gave it a big pull. And after doing the same thing, maybe three more times hoping I would get a different result, I realized there were a lot of things going wrong here. Mainly that I had once again ignored the first commandment and for some reason made this thing really top heavy. And it's not gonna work at all. In the past two weeks of running around, gathering materials, spending patron money and all the lathe singing was just a waste of time. All to make a very small, extremely heavy, expensive, pathetic, dumbbell. Dumbbell? Yoink. And this spins so much better than my big heavy stupid Beyblade. So I reckon if I make it again, but this time reduce the weight and have it on a thinner pole, I should be able to balance it nicely. And to do that, I'm just gonna use this novelty cartoon sized bolt and then we'll once again get help from my mate that knows what he's doing and ask him to taper off the end. Your baggy shirt's so close to that. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> and the new plan for the lawnmower is for it to no longer make contact with the Beyblade via a tire, but for it to spin in a more traditional Beyblade style and to pull a rip cord from the blade, speeding it up. And to do that, I need to attach this wheel hub to the lawnmower. And a good machinist would just reduce a solid piece of round bar to this thread size and just screw it in. But my solution is to get this bolt, which goes inside this bolt, then that bolt goes inside this nut, and then that nut goes inside this pipe, and that pipe fits in the center of this bearing, which will hold it in place. So I just welded it all together and just screwed the hub into the lawnmower, which is firmly bolted to the bench. And for the wire to unwind from the Beyblade, I'm gonna need it to be held in a solid position. And I did speak to Maker's Muse, a pretty smart guy, who sketched up some CAD models of a fancy clamp I could make, which did look quite a bit more impressive than my paint sketch. But I decided to go against his advice and just bought a pair of vice grips and just welded them onto a pipe. Which is a little bit awkward in this position because if the Beyblade starts to wobble and angles up, it can hit the pipe and destroy the whole thing. And after testing, even though I thought this blade would be better balanced, it still won't really stay upright. But I think I know the problem, which is once again, the first commandment, this extra bit of weight on top. So I cut the top of the bolt off and tried spinning it just by itself. And you can see it now spins much better. Also, instead of having the clamp coming from the side, I can have it coming from above, like those crappy vending claw machines. And this will be good, as it means a Beyblade will be dropping away from the clamping device, reducing its chance of destroying it. And after welding the clamp at a new angle and giving the Beyblade a spin. Please don't fall on me. Ooh, so it wobbles. I reckon this is gonna work. And because I want to spend as little time as possible in the drug house, I've constructed this easy to set up IKEA style clamping rig, the core blade. And to help me set up and move everything, I've gotten help from someone with a very particular skill, this guy, whose fingerprints are very distinct and different to my own. Do you have any uh, gloves for me? No, I could only find one pair of them. You'll be all right though, just so I reckon just, yeah, do it without, do it without. Yeah, let's start moving. Sure? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, let's go. 
So we spent the next hour or so cleaning up the room and pulling apart the ceiling to fit the Beyblade in place. And seeing it finally here suspended from the ceiling with the wire and lawnmower is a pretty amazing feeling. Is this half life? <laughs> it looks amazing. But the room was still missing stuff for it to smash. So we searched the rest of the house for stuff to furnish the room with. What are these drug dealer numbers? They're in a little drug code. Do you reckon you can decipher it? I don't know. 420. <laughs> Blaze it. <laughs> oh, a Chinese flag. Oh, it was Chinese flag. Yeah. Ah. They got wire, I didn't have to buy it. What if they show up where you just say, oh, George, George told us to take the plans out. I'm not putting George into this. <laughs> <laughs> Leave him out. <laughs> They're definitely Chinese men. They've got a nice teapot. You told this for the teapot and not the giant Chinese one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The yeah, introduction skills they've made. <laughs> oh, it's terrifying. <laughs> Do you have a torch? Should have a torch. Oh, look at all these melted wires. Oh, man. Wait, there's your problem. You see that on camera? Yeah. It looks like something out of Alien. How did, how did they decide which so that... one gets the big master bed <laughs> over here? <laughs> the big plants. See, this is the problem with drug dealers. Fire safety regulations. Exactly. If this was all legal, they would never have these kinds of fires. You're gonna steal the drug dealer's chippies. Yeah. Oh, there's chippies here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, let's eat some chippies. Wait, eat the drug dealer's chippies. Who wire ties their chippies? There's gonna be something bad in here. It's funny that he did a better job securing his chips than he did wiring the whole house. <laughs> I cannot open these chippies, man. What is chips? Oh, perfectly good chippies. Do I have them? Oh, that gross. They're pretty solid. They're stale. And now that the setup finally looks like every Chinese family's dining room, it's time for a proper test. What are your bets on what's going to happen? Or what do you think is going to happen? I think as this spins, there's going to be a point where this gets too loose and gets caught in there and just like <laughs> rips everything in that way or rips everything through there. <laughs> well, maybe it both happens at the same time. Maybe the lawnmower gets caught up and this gets caught up and they just rip each other towards each other. How are you feeling? Terrified, my heart's racing, okay? Let it rip. Now that was the scenario I was imagining in my head, and unfortunately, it didn't happen. As soon as I got the lawnmower started, what really happened was it just ripped the cord. The cable just ripped <laughs> far out. Well, what, are we, what can we do? Well, we've got the stronger cable um, that the, the dealer's left here, so we could use that. Could use that. It yeah. smells, smells like something's burning though. <laughs> it smells like dirty. I guess it's just what lawnmowers smell like indoors. Yeah, exactly, that's it. Jesus. So we tried now again we with no slack, but that meant the tension on the engine meant that the mower wouldn't start. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, it doesn't. We also tried using the dealer's thicker wire, but had the same problem. One. What I really need is a lawnmower motor with a clutch so I can start winding slowly and then increase the speed. And I probably could make my own dodgy clutch, but I might do that in part two, as we have already spent way too much time in this grow house, as it is. So subscribe if you want to see that. But we still want to see how much damage it would cause if I just pulled the Beyblade the traditional way by hand. I'll move back a bit though. Okay, first test, yep. hand pull. Ready? You're gonna go too fast for yourself? You're a machine! No, it's not. Oh, because the broom's stopping it. Two hits. Four. Oh, it's good. No. I mean, you made a very well balanced thing. 
Let's just get out of the way, I think. Just, I, I want to see you just going to spin forever. Should I chuck something into it? Oh, we need to bring the rock melons out here next time. Oh, I'm going to chuck a pot into it. Whoa! And I was impressed because I thought the pot bounced off the bay blade and smashed the chair and teapot. But after looking at the high speed, I think I just threw the pot into the chair. So we decided to try again, but this time with some more exciting stuff for it to smash. Oi! Did somebody order a light bulb? Hey! Beautiful! Yep! Now some patrons as targets. Oh, melon into it? Yeah. Which one? This is Nug Nug the Nugget. What? <laughs> see what's happened to the melon. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's beautiful. And then in a final attempt to get the Beyblade to fly through a wall and kill one of us, I put something directly beneath it to throw it off balance. It's so uneven already. Pull! Okay. Film some of this chair leg damage. I mean, it's not... Not super impressive. But yeah, look, if you wanted to saw a chair in half, you could probably I reckon you could do choose it a better way. Yeah. And the damage this thing caused definitely was not worth a month's work. And the best thing about this whole build was definitely the fact it resembled a Beyblade enough for even this little idiot to recognize it. Beyblade. Yes. Beyblade. Did we make a Beyblade? High five. Yeah. But besides that, I kind of trashed the dealer's house for nothing. Oh, this is so dumb. and hopefully the kingpin that owns the house isn't watching right now. But if you are, boy, do I have the product for you. Are you sick of obnoxious YouTubers breaking into your house and spitting giant Beyblades everywhere? Well, this whole situation could have easily been avoided if you guys just had today's sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a security system with 24 seven monitoring for only 50 cents a day. Simply Safe will contact the police if they see any suspicious behavior. See all this? It would have never happened as I would have been arrested hours ago. And there are all kinds of security features you get to choose from. You've got door alarms, windows alarms, water sensors, and most importantly, smoke alarms. How does it work? Well, you've got this base station and then you put your other sensors around within a 400 foot range, which is such a big range, it will probably reach all of the other grow houses in the area, all to keep you and your house and property safe. And the best part, it's so easy to set up, you can do it yourself in under an hour. Look, I'm doing it right now. Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Please go visit them at simplysafe.com slash I did a thing to get 30% off your system plus a free camera.